everybody. This is John with NRSNG.com. Uh, we're here to talk about uh, ventilator settings today. Now there are there are, are many different modes of mechanical ventilation um, with the advent of the ventilator and uh, new technology. There's new modes being created and and utilized in different ICUs uh, con constantly. There's different modes used in pediatric ICUs and neonatal ICUs. But what we're going to see most often, um, most likely within uh, adult ICUs, is going to be assist control and SIMV. So AC stands for assist control. SIMV stands for synchronized intermittent mandatory ventilation. Okay. So these are the two modes you're going to see most often. Uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of argument about which one's better, which one's preferred by the patient, which one's better for the patient. Uh, which one's going to cause less work of breathing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. What it really comes down to is going to be preference of the physician uh, and the medical team taking care of them. Under certain circumstances and certain diagnoses, uh, one mode may be better than the other. But what we're going to really focus on today is the difference between the two and exactly what they are. Okay? So, first of all, let's talk about exactly what mechanical ventilation is. So mechanical ventilation, essentially what we're doing with mechanical ventilation is we're inserting a tube right down to here. And this is called the carina. Um, and the carina is right at the bifurcation of the, of the left and right lungs. Um, and what our goal is is to insert this, this tube right down to here and we inflate a cuff right in the trachea at, that, at the carina, right at that bifurcation, and the goal is to equally uh, inflate each lung. So that's really kind of what we're doing with mechanical ventilation. Now we can have uh, mechanical ventilation through an ET tube, an endotracheal tube. Uh, we can have mechanical ventilation through a tracheostomy, uh, which is really, it's that hole in the neck. So here's your, here's your lovely person here, um, and here's a hole in the neck. So that's an ET tube and we can provide mechanical ventilation that way. Uh, you can also provide mechanical ventilation through through the nose. You can actually insert a, a tube through the nose that goes down into the trachea and provides mechanical support. And so what's the difference between mechanical support and just uh, a face mask or nasal cannula? So with mechanical support we're actually providing the a positive pressure to uh, do the mechanical work of breathing that the lungs are no longer able to do. With uh, nasal cannula um, and face masks and things like that, all we're really providing is, is oxygen support and we can um, provide a little bit of pressure, positive pressure with CPAP and BiPAP, which we can go over later. But with mechanical ventilation, we're actually providing that work of breathing that the lungs are not able to do. Um, now normally, with breathing, we have the diaphragm here, and, and we do uh, negative pressure ventilation. Okay, but with mechanical ventilation, oftentimes we'll provide a positive pressure ventilation. We're actually putting air into the lungs rather than drawing the lungs or the diaphragm down to pull air into the lungs. So we're pushing air into the lungs rather than drawing air into the lungs. So that's what our positive pressure ventilation is. Okay, so. Let's talk about uh, AC versus SIMV, okay? So with assist control ventilation, there's really one term that you need to know, and that term is tidal volume, okay? So tidal volume is the volume of air that is actually being drawn into the lungs with each breath. Now when we breathe spontaneously, we have a tidal volume, and when we have mechanical ventilation, there's also tidal volume. So with mechanical ventilation, we can actually set our tidal volume um, to a specific uh, milliliters of air that it will be pushed into the lungs with each breath, okay? So that's, this number is based on the body mass of the person, but generally what you're going to see is our numbers between 3 to, to like 800 milliliters of air per breath. Okay, so that's going to be our tidal volume, and that's spelled tidal volume. Okay, and the abbreviation that you're going to see for that is the VT. Okay, so 
what is assist control ventilation? Okay. Assist control ventilation is uh so assist control ventilation is based on on tidal volumes really. So what assist control ventilation assumes is that uh the same tidal, the same volume is going to be delivered to the patient with every breath. Okay, so what will happen is the the respiratory therapist will set a a rate uh for breathing. So your rate uh might be 12 breaths per minute. Okay, so the ventilator is going to deliver 12 breaths per minute. Now the next factor that the respiratory therapist has to set is the tidal volume. So that might be 500. So the respiratory therapist is going to set a rate of 12 with a tidal volume of 500. Now what's going to happen with this is the patient is going, the ventilator, the machine is actually going to deliver 5 breaths at, with 500 mils of air every single uh, well, every five seconds with a with a rate of 12. So every five seconds, the patient's going to get 500 milliliters of air pushed into the lungs. So that's really assist control. And what can happen with this is the patient can actually initiate their own breath. But another setting that the the respiratory therapist will set is is kind of it's kind of a limit. So the patient, if they initiate their own breath, they have to reach the specific um, inspiratory pressure uh, before they'll be allowed to kind of uh, initiate their own breath. And once they reach that inspiratory pressure, they're going to be delivered this 500 mils. Okay, so the patient can breathe on their own with assist control, but what's going to happen is, as they if they reach a specific pressure, uh, inspiratory pressure, they're going to be delivered 500 mils of air, no matter what, whether they take their own breath or whether it's the breath coming from the machine, they're going to get 500 mils of air. Okay. So that's really the biggest thing to remember with assist control. Um, they're delivered a mandatory rate, and they're delivered a mandatory volume. Now the patient, if they do initiate their own breath, they have to reach a specific inspiratory pressure. As they do that, if they reach that pressure, they're going to be delivered 500 mils of air. Okay. Now how does that differ from SIMV? Okay, the key word here with SIMV is this S, is the synchronized. Okay, so what's going to happen here is the respiratory ther therapist is going to set the rate. So F, by the way, stands for rate when you're talking uh, ventilation. So the, the respiratory therapist is going to set a rate of 12 breaths per minute. They're going to set a tidal volume, again, let's say a 500. Um, and what's going to happen is the, the ventilator is going to deliver these 12 breaths per minute. And every time the ventilator delivers a breath, it's going to deliver a volume of 500. Okay. Now what can happen though is the patient can breathe on their own. There's not the 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 valve remains open between the ventilator and the patient that the patient can take a breath on their own as they want. Now when the patient takes their own breath, they can take any tidal volume they want. That's the key difference with SIMV and assist control. Um, the patient can take any tidal volume they want on spontaneous on spontaneous breaths. Okay, so if the patient the, the ventilator is delivering 12 breaths per minute, the patient wants to take 13, so the patient takes one spontaneous breath. Now what happens with that spontaneous breath is the patient can take any tidal volume they want. Okay, so the patient uh, takes a tidal volume of 50. Now that's not going to deliver them the volume that they need, but that's the volume that the patient uh, drew on their own. On the next breath, the ventilator's triggered, uh, it delivers its breath, it delivers it back at 500. So really that's the only difference. What happens here with the uh, assist control and SIMV, and SIMV, if the patient is not taking breaths on their own, there's really no difference between the two. They're going to each deliver a set rate and they're going to deliver a set volume. The only way that these two start to differ from each other is if the patient is breathing spontaneous. If the patient begins to breathe, I don't even know if I'm spelling spontaneous correctly, I don't know, whatever. So if the patient's breathing spontaneous and their ventilator setting is SIMV, then they're going to take any tidal volume they want. Okay. Now with assist control, if they do take a spontaneous breath, they uh, first of all they have to reach a set uh, inspiratory pressure, and then if they do reach that, they get a set tidal volume. 
Okay, so that's really the, a, a big difference there. Now, what's the advantages and disadvantages of that? Okay, well, there's theories uh, about which is better for patients. Really, it's going to be up to the physician. But what's going to happen with uh, assist control? One of the biggest advantages of this is it's going to decrease the work of breathing. Okay, since the patient since they're they're not really going to be able to take breaths on their own as much or since they're not going to have to draw in specific volumes on their own it's going to decrease that work it's going to decrease the stress on those those uh, respiratory muscles now the downside to that is that they're not going to be uh, working those muscles uh, very much and uh, it can lead to to what's called uh, breath stacking so what happens here is we we breathe in and then we we breathe out you know a specific amount now with the patient taking these uh these uh spontaneous breaths and assist control that don't really reach that limit what's going to happen is they're going to be trying to ex exhale and as they're trying to exhale the ventilator is going to deliver another breath and so what that's going to do is it's going to keep a little bit of air trapped in here in the alveoli so they'll keep trying to get rid of this air but they'll keep being delivered air in so that's called breath stacking it's also called auto peep um, you probably heard of peep it's uh, it's positive end expiratory pressure so they're gonna have a little bit of air trapped inside the alveoli there so that's a disadvantage of of uh, SIMV or of assist control sorry with SIMV um, some of the advantages of that is is, is that it can um, it can kind of help the patient to, um, to to begin to take breaths on their own and kind of work their work their muscles. If if you believe they're in a place where they could could use the the um, respiratory muscle work, that's a good way for them to to begin working those muscles. Um, it can one of the the problems here is though is it can increase that work of breathing. Kind of on the same note, um, which for some patients can be a really bad thing. Now what can happen is, since we have that PEEP set, you know, you might have a, a PEEP set on your ventilator of, uh, of say, like five. Now what happens is for them to, to get that to, for them to, to breathe on their own, they're going to have to overcome that PEEP, first of all, in order to get uh, the volume that they need. And for someone who's already having, you know, in respiratory failure, having uh, other neurological issues or things like that, for them to breathe on their own in the first place is going to be a hard thing. Now you add in their peep, you add in there the tube, you add in the narrow airway, um, it's going to be very hard for them to take breaths on their own. So that's kind of one of the problems with that, that even, even if they are taking breaths on their own, their tidal volumes might be lower anyway because of all the extra work that they're having to do to, to overcome all this extra um, effort that we're, we're creating for them. Um, so there is something that is done to overcome that and what's what's done to overcome that is pressure support so since we're creating all this extra work for them to breathe and since they're already not breathing as well as they need to be in their respiratory failure we have what's called pressure support ventilation and so what pressure support ventilation is is this just uh, added support to spontaneous breaths So for spontaneous breaths, we add, we give them support. So as they initiate a breath, as they take an inspiration, we just give them a little bit of support. We'll give them like uh, 15. Uh, uh, we'll give them like a pressure support of 15 or something, and that will help overcome that peep and uh, the narrow airway and everything like that. So pressure support ventilation. All that pressure support ventilation is is it is uh, added support to the patient when they initiate a spontaneous breath. Okay, so if the ventilator senses that the patient is taking a spontaneous breath, it's going gonna, it's gonna to rush in there and give them just a little bit of support to overcome that, and the rest the patient is going to have to do on their own. So that's what pressure support is. So we have our, our SIMV, our assist control, and then we have uh, pressure support. Okay, so, so we have assist control, Jeez. All right, so we have assist control, SIMV, and pressure support. Okay, 
So I'm just going to tell you the biggest things to remember with each of these. So sys control, the biggest thing to remember is a set title volume. Okay, set title volume that isn't changed whether they take a breath on their own or not. With SIMV, uh, patient determines title volume for spontaneous breaths. With pressure support, it's added support with spontaneous breaths. Okay. So uh, assist control, what you have to remember with assist control is no matter what, the patient is getting a set volume, always. Um, with SIMV, when the patient breathes over the vent or takes more uh, breaths than what the ventilator is delivering them, they can set their own uh, tidal volume. With pressure support, what pressure support is, is that is added support on spontaneous inspiration. Okay. So those are really the things that you have to remember with this. So when you're when you're reporting off to someone and telling them uh, about the ventilator settings for someone, you would say something like this: Patient is mechanically ventilated on SIMV, rate of 12, tidal volume 500, PEEP of 5, pressure support uh, 15. You could also tell them FiO2 50%. Um, and you could tell them other things you could tell them are like size of of tube and um, where the tube is at the lip we'll just say lip length but these are the big things to remember so with you're going to tell them the mode of ventilation the rate the tidal volume peep pressure support so that's kind of what we've talked about today mode rate tidal volume peep and pressure support. So if they're on assist control, that might look like their AC um, rate of 15, tidal volume um, 500. Okay, so those are the things that you would tell somebody. Now, I want to let you guys know uh, that's just really the basics to, to mechanical ventilation. There's so much more to talk about, and we will continue to add uh, more videos about this. But what I want you guys to know is we have a resource available um, that dis discusses some of the uh, modes of oxygen delivery that we have for our patients. If you go to ventsettings.com, that's ventsettings.com, there's a PDF download sheet there that's free. You can share it, you can download it, you can do whatever you want with it. It's ventsettings.com go there you can download this uh, PDF file that uh, is just a really a, a, a sheet with uh, some of the different oxygen delivery methods from nasal cannula all the way up to mechanical ventilation and some terms that are important to know so thanks for checking us out this is John with uh, nrsng.com